Now let's take a closer look at pressure altitude so you thoroughly understand what it really is and why it's important. Uh, when you look at your performance charts, whether you're looking at your uh, takeoff and landing distance or your en route cruise performance, on the altitude column, they ask for you to look at your pressure altitude, not your real altitude. And what this means, again, is that if the, it's a high pressure system and the air is thick, you may have chosen an altitude of 6,500, but because the air is thick, your airplane performs as if it were at 5,500. Or if there were a low pressure system and the air was very thin, your airplane may perform as if it were at 7,500, even though you're only indicating 6,500. So to understand pressure altitude a little better, we have to look back again at a slice of our atmosphere. And remember that the molecules are closer together as we're close to the surface. And all of these air molecules are pulled down toward the Earth because of gravity. And for every thousand feet we go up in the atmosphere, we lose about an inch of mercury per thousand feet. So in a standard atmosphere, if the pressure at sea level was 2992, and we went up 1,000 feet, we would lose an inch of mercury on our barometer. So the pressure would be 2892. Go up another thousand feet, 2792, 2692, and so on. If we could hypothetically go down below sea level, then the pressure down below sea level would be 3092. And if the pressure today, if, if you listen to the ASOS and the pressure today was 3052, you may ask yourself, well, where on the standard scale does the airplane think it is? If standard being at sea level is 2992, and this air is a lot thicker or heavier, the airplane thinks it's down lower than where you really are. And so you may want to say, well, how much lower? How do I know how to calculate this to use it? So what you would do is you get the difference between today's standard pressure and standard, or today's pressure and standard. So if it were 2992 and you just subtract and get the difference between them, you end up with 0 0.6. But remember that you lose an inch of mercury per thousand feet. So I need to multiply this number times 1,000. Or I could simply move the decimal place three places. So we just go one, two, three. So your airplane thinks that it's 600 feet different than standard. And whether I took off at 1048 or I decided to do my flight at 6,500, in either scenario, the airplane thinks it's 600 feet lower than standard. So for my takeoff, my airplane really thinks it's at 448 feet. That is my pressure altitude. So my real field elevation, and then the air is thick, so the airplane thinks it's 600 feet lower than normal. So my pressure altitude is 448 feet. When I go to look at my takeoff and landing distance data performance charts, then I would look for 448 feet, not the 1,000 feet. And the same thing for my cruise performance. If I'm really going to cruise at 6,500, how does the airplane respond? Where does the airplane really think it's flying at? It thinks it's flying at 600 feet less than that. So for my uh, cruise altitude, or my cruise pressure altitude, my real altitude is 5,900 feet. Now we are physically 6,500 feet above the ground, because you put this pressure into your Colesman window to make the needles adjust for this problem. But your pressure altitude is the altitude corrected for non-standard pressure. We'll do another example where the pressure might be lower the particular day. So in this example, let's say that the pressure was uh, 2882. And we have to get the difference between standard pressure and uh, the current pressure for this day. So 29.92 goes up here, we'll get the difference, and we get 1.1. Remember, you have to move the decimal place three places because it's an inch of mercury per thousand feet. So if I move the decimal three places, then my altitude difference would be 1,100. Now this air is it's a low pressure, meaning that the air was not heavy and exerted more force on my barometer. Instead, the air was lighter, it released pressure off my barometer and gave me a lower reading. So that means that the air is very thin. If the air is thin, the airplane thinks it's up higher than where you really are. 
And how much higher? In this example, 1,100 feet higher. So my pressure altitude for my takeoff, instead of being 1048, I would have to add my 1100 to that. So my pressure altitude for my takeoff would be 2148. And for my cruise, instead of being at 6,500 feet, I would have to add the 1,100 feet to that, and I would get 7,600 for my pressure altitude for my performance chart. So you can see, just because of the pressure difference, in one instance the airplane thinks it's closer to 5,000 feet, another day the airplane thinks or performs as if it's up past 7,000 feet. So understanding how to calculate pressure altitude is very important. Now that you understand how to calculate out your pressure altitude, let's see what happens if you uh, performed a flight and did not correct your altimeter setting while you were flying along. Let's say, for example, that you were departing from Golf Mike Uniform, this airport, Greenville, and you were going to perform a flight toward Atlanta. And in Greenville, the, re the altimeter setting was given to you as 3052. Now, when they give you the altimeter setting, they give it to you in relation to sea level. So 3052 for that particular day starts um, at sea level. It's as if they drilled straight down through the ground a thousand feet till they got to the ocean and they weighed all of the air molecules and that was the weight of those air molecules. And this works like a sliding scale. Remember, as we go up a thousand feet, we no longer have to weigh those air molecules. So on average, we lose an inch of mercury. So at a thousand feet, the altimeter would be 2952 and then 2852, 2752, 2652, and 2552. Now just to be sure that you're, you don't get confused about this, you don't continue to change your altimeter as you climb. You set it originally for field elevation, uh, you set it originally for the uh, current pressure in relation to sea level, it read your field elevation, and that as you climb, the needles increase. But as you do climb, the pressure drops about an inch of mercury per thousand feet. So on your way to Atlanta, Atlanta, in the meantime, had a lower pressure. Let's say that their pressure given for that particular day was uh, 2952. So when you, if that was their starting value in relation to sea level, and you go up a thousand feet, it would be 20. 852, 2752, 2652, 2552, and 2452. So if you took off from 1,000 feet and you intended to climb to 4,000 feet, as you climbed up to that 4,000 feet, you're actually flying at the pressure level of 2652. So as you flew at that pressure level of 2652 and you never updated the current altimeter setting as you flew toward Atlanta, your airplane would track or fly that pressure level. So look what happens. You started at 4,000 feet, but you ended up 1,000 feet lower than you intended. So your memory aid that they use is if you fly from high to low, look out below, meaning that you started at a high pressure and you failed to put in your new altimeter setting when the pressure dropped, so your airplane ended up lower than where you're really supposed to be. So high to low, look out below. Let's say we did the reverse. You departed Atlanta, so you originally set the 2952 into your Colesman window, and you departed, and maybe you wanted to fly at, uh, I don't know, 4,000 feet. So you took off, uh, I think they're also close to 1,000 feet, so we'll just put you here. So you took off and you wanted to climb up to 5,000 feet to fly back to the east. So you're flying at 5,000 feet where the pressure level is 2452. And if you did not correct your altimeter setting along the way, your airplane's going to continue to track that pressure level of 2452. So 2452, back here in Greenville, would put you up at 6,000 feet. So your airplane would actually climb, and you wouldn't notice you were climbing because you're just simply trying to hold your indicated altitude, but your aircraft would physically be higher off the ground while you're trying to maintain your altitude because you never adjusted your altimeter setting. So your memory aid is high to low, look out below, 
low to high, clear the sky. And that's your memory aid that goes along with this. So you may ask yourself, well, how do I get an update of pressures along the way while I fly? Most of the time, you'll be smart enough to ask for flight following. And flight following is when we talk to ATC, air traffic controllers, and every time you talk to a new controller, they always give you the, the updated altimeter setting. So whether you fly from here to Florida or here to New York, while you're flying along and you, you talk to each new controller, um, you could listen, or uh, they would give you an updated altimeter setting. If for some reason the controllers were too busy to talk to you, which that does happen if you fly near really busy airspaces like Atlanta or Orlando or something or Miami, um, then you could also just look at your sectional chart and look for nearby airports that have ASOSs or AWOSs and just dial, in them in, dial those in and listen to them and you can update your altimeter setting that way as well.